Hi, I'm Dr. Katherine Fishkoff, the senior author of the paper Ethical Framework for Treatment Over Objection. I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Ken Prager, the originator and formulator of the Rubin Prager algorithm, and he will briefly review the seven questions. One of the commonest consults that we get called upon here at Columbia is whether or not it is ethical ever to treat a patient who lacks capacity against their wishes when we feel that they are refusing an efficacious treatment. And we've devised seven questions which help us to address this and hopefully come up with an ethically appropriate approach. Number one, what is the imminence of harm to the patient? And number two, what is the severity of harm? The greater the imminence of harm and the greater the severity of harm would, would make it ethically more appropriate to proceed against uh, objection. Number three would be the question of the efficacy of treatment, and four would be the side effects of treatment. Common sense would dictate that the more efficacious the treatment and the lower the side effects, the greater the ethical appropriateness of proceeding against the wishes of the patient. Um, number five would be the question of what would be the emotional effect on the patient? Would the patient suffer severely? This is very difficult to project, but still is something that one should consider. Number six are the reasons for refusal. Can we address the reason for refusal and thereby hopefully obtain the patient's consent? And finally is the issue of logistics of treatment. There are certain treatments which simply cannot be carried out continuously against the wishes of the patient. For example, dialysis. We cannot take a patient three times a week against their wishes for dialysis. This would be logistically and ethically uh, inappropriate and unacceptable. Whereas treating a patient once, sedating a patient once for a treatment that may be very helpful and efficacious would be ethically acceptable and logistically possible. Using these questions, therefore, I think, gives one uh, a, a framework in how to approach this difficult ethical dilemma.